everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and these keep doing really well. Except for the female one. What's wrong with you people? Anyway, we're back again with another me reading Twitter instead of doing something productive with my life. Uh, today we're asking a very important question. Uh, can I do this indefinitely? <laughs> That's not even going to be it. Don't put that in there. So today's thread is going to be about something a little different than usual. Usually when we're talking about individual cards, we're talking about their power levels and how they were over or underestimated. Today we're talking about the actual text on the cards. Now sometimes if a Yu-Gi-Oh card was printed before Problem Solving Card Text, which originated in 2011, or was printed with an unbelievable power level but is still a fan favorite, something like Sangan, it'll be issued what's called an errata. An errata is a text change that modifies how the card is played. Frequently these erratas just clear up confusion about what the cards themselves actually do, but oftentimes they also nerf cards, buff cards in some rare cases, and sometimes change cards entirely. For an example of the latter, here is Mysterious Puppeteer. I'm not a fan of puppeteer. The first print of this card says when the monster is summoned, excluding special summon, or flip face up by attack or some effect, the life points of this card's owner increase by 500 points for each monster while this card is face up on the field. I don't know what that means, but the errata says each time your opponent normal summons or flip summons a monster, increase your life points by 500 points. Easy, simple, clean, and also a completely different effect. Yado Karu is a weird one. It used to activate when it switched from defense to attack, which made sense because you would expect to set a card with these stats. But now you have to summon it in attack, protect it, wait a turn, then switch it to defense. When this card is changed from defense to attack position, place any number of cards from your hand at the bottom of the deck on any order you desire. When this card is changed from attack position to defense position, put any number of cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck in the order you desire. Well, that's fair. They had to make an effect that good much harder to get to. Listen, I understand why they changed Ring of Destruction, but man, the journey it goes on is so funny to me. A classic bit is the pains they take to make sure this card can absolutely never, ever again result in a tie. Yeah, Ring of Destruction is an impressively powerful card and was playable pretty much the entire time it was legal. It recently came back with like 15 different stipulations. The original card destroyed a face-up monster and inflict damage to both players equal to its attack. Now, you can only use it during your opponent's turn. Your opponent has to have more life points than the attack of the monster you're destroying, and you have to take the damage first, and then you can only activate one of them per turn. It's just miserable. This is more of a misprint than an errata, but a Luber the Boober of Duber actually did receive a change to its text. The first print says you can add a Despia spell trap from your deck to your hand, but uh, there's no such thing as a Despia spell trap. They were supposed to write branded. Maneater Bug is one of those cards that's written in a way that I absolutely love. Back in the day, Yu-Gi-Oh had no idea what they were going to allow their cards to do, which is why the original print of Maneater Bug says destroys one monster on the field regardless of position. Oh, thank God. There's a couple of these erratas that specifically change the name of cards because a cute little translation error in 2002 meant that when they made an archetype around a specific card name, the card was included in it. As a result, every frog card for like a decade had the text on it that said, except Frog the Jam. Finally, they bit the bullet and just reprinted it as Slime Toad. Barf. Justice for my boy. The Blackwing Counter Trap accidentally got errata in Legendary Duelist Season 2 to no longer say when a monster your opponent controls activates its effect. Now it says when an opponent's monster activates its effect, which means that it can negate Nibiru. Oh, cool. And then they fixed it with the database, putting it back to the bad version. Cypher Soldier does have a really weird errata history. This card was playable multiple times over the course of its lifespan. When it battles a warrior type monster, its attack and defense is increased by 2000 during damage calculation. This is really good in formats where stuff like Six Samurai exist. The first print is Earth. It was not supposed to be Earth, so they changed it to Light. And then they changed it again to let you know that it only works during the damage step, moving it back to Earth. And finally, they changed its name entirely to Cypher Soldier because a translation error included it in an archetype it was not supposed to be a part of. Cool. Whoa, is that... Alex Simo? They straight up just changed how Rampart Blaster works. No, they didn't. What? While this is in face-up defense position, this card can attack your opponent's life points directly. In that case, apply half of this card's attack for damage calculation. Sure. Must be fusion summoned, cannot be special summoned by other ways. Well, that's clunky, but is in fact the same effect. This card can attack while in face-up defense position, 
but only if your opponent controls no monsters? <laughs> Why'd they nerf this? Oh, thankfully they put it back for the GX Speed Duel Box. Oh, another card that was just slaughtered. CZV tributes a monster with a thousand or less attack to destroy all cards they control with 1500 or more attack for the next three turns. What does the new one do? Tribute a dark monster with a thousand or less attack. Your opponent takes no damage until the end of the next turn. Also, look at your opponent's hand and all monsters they control. And if you do, destroy the monsters among them with 1500 or more attack, comma, then your opponent can destroy up to three monsters with 1,500 or more attack in their deck. Allows them to plus into the graveyard and only lasts one turn. They take no damage for a turn and a half afterwards. Sick. Burstinatrix has the distinction of being the only monster to have its flavor text eroded. A flame manipulator who is the only woman among the elemental heroes, her burst fire burns away villainy. Two, a flame manipulator who was the first elemental hero woman. Wow! Oh, diversity win. What the hell was going on with Necro Valley? This isn't even all the erratas. So Necro Valley is weird. The idea is it's meant to lock the graveyard entirely, prevent any effect from causing a card to go in or out. But it turns out that Yu-Gi-Oh has printed like 400,000 different effects that interact with the graveyard and boxing them all out is pretty difficult. So here we have, as long as this card remains face up on the field, all effects of magic, trap, and or effect monster cards that involve graveyards are negated and neither player can remove cards in the graveyards from play. Next one, negate the effects of spell trap and monster cards that affect a card in the graveyard and neither player can remove cards from play from the graveyard. Next, cards in the graveyard cannot be banished. Negate any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place. Negate any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard. What? The hell does that mean? Negate the effects of all spells, traps, and effect monsters that target a card in either player's graveyard. Cards in either player's graveyard cannot be removed from play. Sick. What's current Necro Valley? Oh, the current Necro Valley is the negate any card effects that change types or attributes in the graveyard. The best version of Necro Valley, in my opinion, is the one that allowed Graffa to resummon itself. Raiko's funny because to this day, I really don't know what they want this card to do. When he was released, he destroyed cards without targeting. Then later they were like, no, 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 he has to target. Then later they decided, no, you know, these should be sequential, two different effects activated in sequence, and he should target. And now, they're applied simultaneously and he no longer targets again. What is going on with this card? Ah! Rest in peace, my boy. There's actually a really old Sangan print that I think is OCG only that did not specify it had to be sent from the field to the graveyard. You can imagine how that went. Remember what they took from you, face down attack position monsters. Uh, Darkness Approaches used to be the only card that could put monsters in face down attack position by discarding two cards from your hand. Select one face up monster and flip it face down, but do not change its battle position. Now you have to change it to face down defense. This is Joe Brandon's America. Mask of Restrict's original printing is iconic. No matter what the situation. Neither player can offer any monster as a tribute. Shouts out to Relinquished. They had to change the text so many times because of copyright, plus the fact that they forgot to put his summoning condition in. What? Copyright? The fuck is the copyright issue on Relinquished? Oh, Magic Ruler. Yeah, Relinquished is absolutely crazy. Let me just read you the original text. <clears throat> this monster can take on the attack and defense of one opponent's monster on the field. A face down monster results in attack and defense of zero. Treat the selected monster as an equip magic card and use it to equip Relinquished. You may only use this effect once per turn and can equip Relinquished with only one monster at a time. When your opponent's monster attacks a monster with an attack higher than Relinquished, the equipped monster is destroyed instead of Relinquished. Any life point damage you receive from the attacking monster when Relinquished is equipped is also inflicted to your opponent. Listen, I play Relinquished in GOAT because I'm a masochist, and I do appreciate that they have printed a high rarity, very pretty version of this card in Speed Duel Tournament Pack 1, so we can get a version that actually does what it says on the tin. Oh, Goyo. Goyo, how could this happen to you? This card was ass when it was brought off. It could come off with literally no changes to this day, but they took it off with an errata that made you have to use an Earth Tuner. Why? Basically, any old ritual spell that references level, stars, or making offerings. Yeah, I think they figured that would be too much for suburban housewives. Mommy, let me make an offering to the god of turtles. And here it is. The greatest of all time. Dark Strike Fighter. A seven-star synchro. 
You can tribute one monster to inflict damage to your opponent equal to its level times 200. Changed it to... During your main phase one, you can tribute one monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the tributed monster's level on the field times 200. You can only use this effect of Dark Strike Fighter once per turn. So a stipulation that you can only use it in your main phase one, so you can't go to combat and then clean up the rest of their life points, and a hard once per turn. Notably, a bunch of these cards could get their erratas reversed like Goyo Guardian and be completely fine and unplayable in the current format. But Dark Strike Fighter is one of those weird cards that, if this card reverted to its old errata, not only would it see heavy, meta-relevant play, it would change the format entirely. If this card were legal, as written, Every single deck would be a Dark Strike Fighter FTK, and Die Rolls and Hanawada would be deciding who won these games. Unbelievably powerful card. Do you know how easy it is to get a 7-star Synchro on your side of the field these days? Do you know how frequently people make Yazi? Imagine if Yazi read, you win the game. It already kind of does. Diamond Direwolf had a wild change in card text. I'm surprised no one talks about it. I've literally never heard of it. Once per turn, you can detach an Xyz monster from this card, then target a Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast monster you control and one other card in the field. Destroy them. I'm familiar with that. Thanks, Dyer. Do an outro? Oh, yeah. Fuck you, Dyer. No outro.